Hi everybody, uh, I'm the greatest living inventor and uh, today we are doing my invention, uh, Galton Turbulence. Uh, I'll write it uh, on the board. Galton Turbulence. Okay, Galton Turbulence. Um, so, as you noticed uh, already, I guess, um, I'm sure you, you have noticed, uh, there is a big uh, Galton board uh, in, the, in the middle of the room. Okay, so uh, in the middle of the whiteboard. So, um, this is something that I uh, tried to build once and um, during uh, building it, I thought about this invention. Okay, so um, and it explains uh, uh, turbulence. Okay, through the Galton board. Okay, so uh, this is a Galton board. Okay, Galton board is named after uh, Sir uh, Francis Galton. Who was um, an English uh, mathematician. Um, well, not not a mathematician, more of a stati statistician, okay? Uh, English, well, he was uh, many things, he invented many things, uh, English polymath, okay? English polymath. Um, he invented uh, this, but he invented many other things like um, um, invented the um, the the um, connection between uh, uh, psychology and the um, um, and the statistics. Okay, and also invented the uh, eugenics, which is uh, now considered bad, but is actually good if you see the the movie uh, *Idiocracy*. Then you understand that it's a good thing. It's not like and the Nazis used the uh, eugenics for, for bad things but that doesn't make eugenics bad like uh, Stalin used communism for bad things but, that's, but that uh, doesn't make uh, communism bad so you need to separate between what evil people did and what uh, smart people invented okay so um, so anyway, invented many things, including uh, this thing. Uh, this is a, you see it's a board, okay? So uh, <laughs> I built this one, so it's not complete. It should have uh, like, um, uh, small uh, boards here and, um, and here, and uh, then you, and, and glass cover, and then you can uh, flip it and uh, the balls, I'll show you how it, how it works. I'll explain about my invention in a minute. But basically, uh, there should be like uh, boards here. And um, it's like it's, it's supposed to be um, like a, a structure of, a, of an, an hourglass, of a, like with the sand. Okay, so there should be. Uh, board here and board here. You can see in uh, Wikipedia, uh, you can write a uh, Galton board and see this in action. Uh, and then you have a small uh, metal balls. Okay, I'll show you. Okay. 
okay and then when you release the balls it's like um, they fall and uh, that's why uh, <laughs> it's not complete but um, you're supposed to see that uh, most of the balls will fall in the middle and uh, only few of the balls will fall to the side. Why? Because they are released in the middle and uh, only if they take a, a series of uh, falling to the right, 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 they will get to here, which is a uh, a rare event okay so and uh, only if they get left 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 they fall here but if they take uh, some um, combination of uh, random uh, left right left right they will fall somewhere in the middle okay and most of them will fall uh, in this column okay so um, so then uh, I wanted to to build a um, Okay, you see another one, and another one, okay, decides, but uh, all the random, um, it's like Pascal's triangle, okay, if, if you know this from school, okay, you have, um, this triangle, Pascal's triangle, Uh, where each um, place is the uh, sum up of the 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 two uh, places above it. For example, here uh, one and one makes two. Okay, and one and two makes uh, three, and two and one makes three, and the next one the next line will be one and uh, four and six and four. Okay, because it's three plus one, and okay, it, it continues. It, it's endless. But uh, the point is that uh, these numbers give you the the number of uh, um, opportunities for the ball to fall. Okay, so there are many uh, opportunities for the ball to fall um, in the middle. And there are only uh, little opportunities for the ball to fall in the in the ends. Okay, this is in theory, uh, but in, in mathematics, okay, it's like it's real. It's it's called the um, Pascal triangle. It's called uh, binomial coefficients. Okay, and if we would um, if we would run the the Galton board with a lot of balls, you are supposed to see that there are many balls here. There will be a high column in here. Okay, like there would be. a high column in here, many balls here, and uh, fewer balls uh, on the side. And fewer balls on the side. And fewer balls on the side, and so on. OK, and this, this is a shape that is called um, a bell curve. Bell curve, okay, because it looks, it looks like a bell, right? From the side, like here is the thing that uh, makes the noise. And uh, also, it's called the uh, normal distribution. Okay. 
okay? Because uh, like if there is a, a population, like uh, the height of uh, people, the average people, like uh, my height is like uh, uh, one meter and uh, 80 centimeters. So this will be the average. And uh, there are not many people that are uh, two meters high, and there are not many uh, males, uh, men, the men, <laughs> that there are they are uh, uh, one meter and a half, for example. So uh, the average is like uh, there are many people that are average. Okay, also in intelligence, also in uh, uh, how thin or uh, fat the per the person is. So. There are not many uh, very fat people. There, there are no many uh, thin people. Most of the people are here. This is the most, uh, most of the population is uh, average. Okay, so this is normal distribution and also it's called a uh, Gauss distribution or Gaussian distribution uh, which is named after uh, Gauss okay and uh, the the prince of the mathematician probably uh, the best mathematician ever or at least one of the top three okay um, so so we've seen um, what it should do and now uh, I'll explain I'll uh, read the invention and the hope it will uh, talk to you more. The, the main thing in the invention is that uh, in reality it doesn't make this. If you put small, uh, small balls, let's do this with small balls. I hope it will uh, succeed because it doesn't, it's very uh, touch and go because it depends on the uh, correct uh, slope like if I'm putting it uh, more uh, lying uh, horizontally and so on. But let's try. Okay, I'm taking uh, smaller balls and I'm putting them uh, here. Okay, let's put them one at a time. Okay, uh, did you see? Sorry. Okay, I lost one, I think. No, it's here. Uh, did you see the last one, what it did? It's like, um, I cannot recreate it on, on uh, when I want to, but sometimes it does this specific thing. Uh, it, it goes, I will show with the big one. Uh, I will bring a, a, a really big one and I will show you in principle, okay? Okay, this is from the uh, Balls of Steel uh, award that you know that I made in, uh, in the Neoladism site. So, um, it's an award that I give to people uh, who are courageous in the in warning the humanity. So uh, if w if I'm demonstrating with this, I'm not dropping this because it will ruin the board and also it will not fall between the pegs. But uh, if I'm uh, like recreating, uh, simulating what's about to happen um, in in reality with s very small balls, they roll down, they hit here, and they like. Um, jump, 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 and like continue to the side. If there wasn't a frame, they would just uh, uh, fly to the side. Like they, they skip here or here and they straight uh, in a stream of uh, to the side. Okay, uh, so, so that's what uh, many times happen in a specific uh, a parameter which I'm not sure of, 
but um, this is exactly my invention. That sometimes, in practice, not in theory, it happens that most of the balls are here and here, and uh, only a few of the balls are uh, in the middle. And it depends exactly uh, in this model on the size of the balls and the uh, speed of the balls and the height which you drop them, which is basically the speed because it uh, decides how fast uh, they will fall when they come to here, to the middle peg. And uh, in the turbulence, sorry, in the turbulence uh, case, it depends on uh, some other parameters, which I'm not sure of, but uh, I'm sure, I'm not sure, but I think it, de it behaves in the same way as uh, that ball that I hope you've seen that uh, goes straight to here, okay? Or straight to here. Okay, so now I, I will read you the, uh, the, the invention for you and I hope it will uh, make more sense. Um, I will close the window and uh, light up. Okay, so it's just, it shows you that uh, from time to time it's good to do something not uh, theoretical but also practical, like build something uh, because it brings you another uh, kind of uh, thoughts. Like I wouldn't think about this uh, if it wasn't for uh, building uh, this and thinking how high I should uh, put the, um, the, this uh, structure that uh, lets them fall. Okay, so I'll explain. Okay, Galton Turbulence. Uh, this idea came to me when I built a wooden Galton board, bin machine. Okay, this is a Galton board, is also called a bin machine. bean machine because if you don't have uh, metal balls you can put uh, beans okay it's the same it works the same um, of course not cooked like uh, the um, hard beans uh, which is a device invented by Sir Francis Galton okay we've talked about him uh, used to explain the normal distribution. Uh, the main question in turbulence, for example in water flowing in a canal, is why smooth current, laminar flow, is starting to have eddies, uh, whirlpools, swirls, okay, which it's the same thing, which is a turbulent flow, okay? So we have uh, I'm erasing uh, so I can write. Maybe I'll put this to the side because you've seen it already. Okay, so I'll put it in order later, but just so it doesn't uh, interrupt with what we're doing. Sorry. So, uh, and I'll, I'll raise the camera a little bit. Okay, can you see? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, 
So um, the main question in turbulence, uh, for example, in water flowing in a canal, is why smooth current laminar flow is start starting to behave, uh, starting to have eddies, whirlpo whirlpools, swirls, turbulent flows. Okay, so if we are doing this, uh, we are explaining what turbulence is. Okay. Okay, so you can watch in Wikipedia and see how Galton board makes this shape. Okay, it's really nice. They have the video there. When you look for a Galton board in Wikipedia. Uh, okay, so now we are explaining in, in like two words what is turbulence. Turbulence, I never know how to pronounce it, but what it means is uh, that if you have water flowing or uh, air or uh, smoke from a cigarette or anything that is uh, fluid, okay, it doesn't have to be liquid, it can be also a uh, gas, but uh, that it uh, flows, okay, but let's talk about water, it's the easiest to understand. So if you have um, like if you see a river that is flowing okay and the water is going this way and then suddenly um, the water is uh, gets uh, troubled okay like uh, white water okay white water this is this is not turbulence this is a laminar This is called laminar, uh, which means uh, smooth, okay? Laminar flow, smooth. Okay, there are no uh, whirlpools. But uh, after some time, uh, okay, if it gets, uh, if the water is uh, faster or if other uh, conditions are happening, then uh, there will be, there will start to be uh, whirlpools, like um, here this uh, will uh, go into a whirlpool and this will go uh, in, like, I don't know how to draw this and the scientists don't know how it exactly happens, this is the point of the um, of the invention okay so i'm explaining how this is happening going from laminar flow smooth to um okay this is laminar smooth to turbulent turbulent flow or turbulence if you just want the the noun turbulence turbulence which is um, eddies and whirlpools whirlpools okay or eddies or um, swirls uh, 
had these wheel pulls. wheels okay so many of them okay like if there is one uh, one big whirlpool it, it's not necessarily a uh, turbulence okay like um, this is not not turbulence if there is something like a big whirlpool that is uh, organized okay it's when it's not organized when it's like a uh, chaos okay chaos in the mathematical meaning okay like a, like a fractal of um, of these things in all sorts of uh, scales okay there are big whirlpools there are small whirlpools and they are uh, like similar to it's self similar okay so cars in the in this sense of uh, not expect um, that you cannot expect it okay so it's like a, like a double pendulum okay so uh, it's chaotic and that's when it's uh, turbulence if it's uh, if you can uh, predict it or predict it in another way, it's not turbulence, okay? Uh, okay, so uh, here I will explain the mechanism of how this happens based on the model of the Galton board, which you've seen. Okay, a hard question for God. Okay, this is a nice story. According to a, an apocryphal story, okay, it, it means it's not true, but it's a nice story. Werner Heisenberg was asked what he would ask God, given the opportunity. His reply was, when I meet God, I'm going to ask him two questions. Why relativity and why turbulence? I really believe he will have an answer for the first. Okay, so relativity is, uh, is easy for God. But uh, turbulence is not easy even for God. Okay, so you see it's a funny story. Uh, a similar witticism have been, has been attributed to Horace Lamb, who had published a noted textbook on hydrodynamics. Okay, so this is probably, the, the story is probably true, uh, but about uh, Horace Lamb. Okay, so it's just an, uh, an anecdote, a funny anecdote. Okay, but it means that it's very, very difficult. Uh, Richard Feynman, uh, that we've talked about him before, in other uh, inventions, uh, one of the most genius of all time, a uh, physicist, uh, or people in general, uh, said that um, turbulence is uh, the most uh, important um, open problem which means it doesn't have a solution yet so it's the mo most important uh, question that we don't know um, in um, in classical um, physics okay so it's really really important if we understand this we know how uh, to make a prediction of the weather we know how to uh, make uh, airplanes uh, fly without um, with much less fuel because they don't uh, fight with the air they will go through the air uh, more efficiently uh, the same with ships or in submarines and whatever okay so it's like it's really important we we even if in your tap water uh, it will work better if we understand this okay so it's like it's everywhere everywhere that there is a flow of a uh, liquid or gas okay so um, 
A similar witticism has been attributed to Horace Lamb, another physicist, uh, who had published a noted textbook on hydrodynamics. His choice being quantum electrodynamics instead of relativity and turbulence. Okay, so everybody agreed that turbulence is the hardest. Okay, Lamb even forgot. Okay, Lamb was quoted as saying in a speech to the British, to the British Association for the Advancement of Science, I am an old man now, and uh, when I die and go to heaven, there are two matters on which I hope for enlightenment. One is quantum electrodynamics, and the other is the turbulent motion of fluids. And about the former, I am rather optimistic, okay, thinks God will have an answer for uh, quantum electrodynamics. Uh, okay, for a cool, very interesting and easy to follow introduction to turbulence, watch this short video clip by three blue, one brown. Okay, so three blue, one brown. We'll put this here because it, it makes an introduction to this. Three blue, one brown. And the... Uh, Sorry, his uh, video is called Why 5 divided by 3, okay, 5 thirds is a fundamental constant for turbulence. Why uh, 5 thirds is a um, fundamental constant for turbulence. Okay, I don't have uh, the patience to write it, but uh, you should see it in, uh, in uh, YouTube. Okay, so, um, okay, I'll write it, so it's not a good uh, quality to be lazy. Uh, I'll write it here. Why? Five thirds. is a fundamental fundamental constant for turbulence Okay, it's a nice video, you see it in YouTube, um, I'll put the link in the video description. Uh, it also involves a physics girl, and um, by the way, there is also a nice uh, video about uh, turbulence uh, of uh, veritasium. Okay, veritasium. Okay, so there are, uh, they'll give you a sense of what is uh, turbulence okay, and why, why it is important. I'm trying to tell you these two anecdotes and so on, but um, it's a really, really important question. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so now uh, for, the, for the main uh, dish, the main course in, uh, in our uh, explanation of my invention, we are getting to the invention itself. Okay, so, so far it was the problem, okay, why it becomes from this, why it starts to be like this, okay, from smooth to uh, whirlpools, why it becomes like uh, whirlpools. So, I'm explaining why, and uh, I will uh, explain through a video. By the way, um, the, the videos and I guess also the mathemat mathematicians uh, so far talk about how uh, like more in this sense of how uh, turbulence uh, ends and becomes uh, dissipated into a, a smaller and smaller whirlpools until it's uh, viscosity okay until there is no more uh, flow 
okay? Well, not back to this, but like into a viscosity. Viscosity is when it's, uh, the fluid is not, uh, is, is um, like honey, okay? It's like it's flowing very slow and all the energy went uh, through uh, the, the heat of the um, tiny, tiny whirlpools. So, um, so I'm not going to, uh, into, in this way, I'm talking about how it, they talk about how it ends, okay? How it ends. And I'm talking about how it begins. Okay, so this is the main difference. Uh, I think it, this is the more important uh, question, how it begins. Okay, uh, okay. So all these uh, five-thirds things and this, it's like uh, it's some uh, ratio of the diameter uh, of, the, um, of any uh, whirlpool, even if it's small, even if it's big. Um, a ratio between the kinetic energy, which means how fast it goes, um, to uh, how big uh, the whirlpool are, the whirlpools are, and um, they have uh, something the the d the diameter, the the size of the whirlpool uh, times uh, not times to the power of uh, five thirds. Okay, this is what they call Magarov. I think uh, um, found out, and this happens in uh, in some uh, spectrum. Um, then, um, but but we are talking about uh, the question of how it begins. Okay, it's another question. Okay, so I'm erasing this. How much time do we have? Thirty-seven minutes. Okay, it's amazing how uh, even in uh, three pages of uh, invention, it's like the shortest that I have. Uh, still, I'm able to uh, waste <laughs> 37 minutes. But, uh, but I've shown you also the, the physical demonstration, which is what I think uh, relevant and uh, also um, interesting, I hope. Okay. So, um, so the main uh, video that you have to see, okay, 3D, uh, sorry, three blue, one brown, and the uh, veritasium and physics girl are like bonus, okay? But the main uh, thing that you have to see to understand my invention is a video uh, called, um, it's a computer simulation. Uh, and the invention is called, uh, here I'm reading to you, my idea is based on the two minutes long simulation in this video, Galton board slash Galton Brett simulation. Uh, I'll give you the whole uh, name of the video because it's so important that you will see it to understand my idea. Uh, Galton board. They write it with one word. It's normally it's two words. Um, sorry. Slash. Galton. Brett. I'll put it in the description of the video, but in anyway, it's really important that you will see it. So I'm, so I'm uh, writing it down. Simulation. Or bin machine, uh, queen conks, or Galton box.
by petabyte ninety-nine. Okay, this is not GG, it's nine nine. Okay, so my idea is based on the two minutes long simulation in this video. Okay, a computer simulation in this video, you have to see it. Um, we will focus on how the large balls behave and how the small balls behave. Okay, I tried to show you in, real, in the real world, but it's like it's very um, sensitive to the how exactly the slope is how um, high you hold the balls and there they show it uh, like in an excellent way you should see the, this video okay so I'm I'm, I'm uh, treating you as if you've seen this video and now I'm explaining what you've what you've seen okay um, large balls laminar flow Okay, so it's all in this uh, in this uh, video. Okay, let's write it in this way. Um, large balls. Laminar flow. Um, most of the particles continue to flow straight down the stream. Okay, it's like what you've seen in the middle column. Okay, they start in the middle, they go uh, left, right, left, right, never mind, and most of them continue straight in uh, the middle. Okay, so this is the, the, the laminar flow, the smooth flow. They continue most of the river when it's uh, not uh, going fast, is continuing in the middle of the river. Okay. Um, most of the particles continue to flow straight down the stream, just like most of the large balls fall to the middle sections of the model. Okay. Small balls, turbulent flow. Small balls. equals turbulent turbulent flow okay they do this uh, sideways thing and I will explain okay uh, I'm quoting the explanation from a comment uh, on that video uh, by uh, Mr. David Bugler. Okay, so comment, comment by um, Mr. David Bulger. Okay, I hope I'm getting the name right. Maybe it's Bulger. Bulger. Okay. Watching the small balls fall, you can see that they tend to gather momentum and run in diagonal paths. Uh, diagonal paths, like a path, many paths. Di of diagonal, either this way or this way, uh, to the left or right. Uh, that is, they don't change direction much. This, illu this illustrates the importance of the independence assumption in the central limit theorem. Okay, so 
I don't understand what he's saying, but obviously he knows more uh, physics or mathematics than me, but which is not hard. <laughs> but um, he's explaining it in, in more the same thing that I've shown you in, intuitively. Uh, I, he's explaining it in more um, um, professional terms. Okay, so I'm writing just the terms. This illustrates the importance of the independence assumption in the central limit theorem. In the dependence assumption uh, in the in the central limit theorem. Okay, and he explains if the individual uh, individual random variables are not independent, uh, then their sum may not tend to a normal distribution. Okay, so what I'm uh, gathering from this is if the ball uh, is uh, influenced by his previous fall, okay, if it falls from here to here and this influences that he will fall from here to here because he gathered momentum, he gets faster and uh, like has more uh, energy towards here, then uh, it's no longer uh, random in each state. It's influenced from the previous step. Okay? So I guess this is what he means. Uh, in the model, so I'm read, reading again. Um, I'm quoting the explanation from a comment on that video by Mr. David Balger. Watching the small balls fall, you can see that they tend to gather momentum and run in a diagonal path, sorry, in diagonal paths to the left or right. That is, they don't change direction much. This illustrates the importance of the inde independence assumption in the central limit theorem. If the individu individual random variables are not independent, then their sum may not tend to a normal distribution, to this uh, bell curve. Okay, they don't show a bell curve, they show something else because they are no longer independent on each uh, step. They, uh, they depend on what they did on the step, on the previous step. Okay. Uh, in the model, this means they go more and more to the side until they hit a wall. Okay, this is no longer his quote, this is me. In the model, in the, both in, uh, in the wooden model and in the uh, 3D model in the YouTube video of uh, Petabyte 99, in the model, this means they go more and more to the side until they hit a wall. But in real flow, Okay, in water, river or something, they go more and more to the side, which creates a swirl or eddy. Okay, because think about it. If they are going to the side here, like this, then now this is their, uh, they don't have their uh, gravity, okay? In reality and in the 3D model, they have gravity all the time towards here. But in real life, it's like, Okay, now this is their, uh, their velocity, their uh, speed is towards here, okay? So now they do the same in here. So instead of going to where they, uh, this new direction, they go to the side, okay? So now they, they go like this. And now that this is the side, they go like this. And okay, so this is, this is the whirlpool, okay? And when it's 3D, it's a 3D whirlpool, okay? Uh, three, th um, three blue, one brown says in w at one point that uh, you cannot 
change some of the things from 2D to 3D, okay? But he talks about things that go from um, like a big uh, whirlpool to many small whirlpools, okay? But we are talking on the other way of from the small movements, how the, how the, how the turbulence uh, begins, okay? When there is nothing and then a small thing and then a big thing, okay? And he talks about the other way around, from a big thing, like an, um, he looks at a big whirlpool, how it turns into smaller and smaller whirlpools. This is how the, this is essentially how the, the um, turbulence ends, okay? How it dies. We are seeing how this begins, how it, how it is born. Okay, so uh, in the model this means they go more and more to the side until they hit a wall. But in real flow, they go more and more to the side, which creates a whirlpool or eddy. Uh, in real flow, this happens in 3D. Okay, the same thing, but in 3D. Uh, the pegs, uh, the static pins, are the slower particles. The balls are the faster particles, okay? It's not like we have real pegs like uh, I did from wood. It's like uh, the, the droplets of water, those that are uh, slower, uh, they, and they are um, uh, uh, randomly um, uh, spaced inside the liquid, uh, they, are, um, they are acting as the pegs, okay? They are slower. And the faster going droplets of water, which are randomly, again, randomly uh, scattered in the water, are, uh, the, are the balls, okay? They are the moving part. The pegs, the static pins, are the slower particles, and the balls are the faster particles. In a real flow, the large and small is some other parameter, okay? It's not large balls and small balls, it's some other parameter, which I don't know, which still needs to be found, that triggers turbulent behavior. Maybe some critical threshold ratio, like distance between pegs to speed of balls. Okay, uh, question mark, maybe it's this thing. Uh, okay, so here I'm writing, by the way, I built it at home, a Galton board out of wooden board and metal ball bearings, and this, all, this effect also happens in reality. I tried to show you, I couldn't, uh, or maybe just one, that if you could uh, see. Um, small balls sometimes go fast to the side and ignore the middle. Okay, so uh, this was uh, my invention, and uh, I hope it was clear. And I'll see you in my next invention. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you.